It's Friday! Alright, we are live, Tara. We've got, it is Friday, so it's Seat and Sword here yes. at Iron 45. Woo! Can, can y'all hear us? Because we've got a... Uh, we got a group with us today! We are live! So thank you all so much for being with us. Um, These are fun, <laughs> fun days. These are fun days. It's, <laughs> See. We've so got fun. so many Bible nerds with us today. I love it. They're just excited to grow and to learn today. And I'm, yes. I'm equally as excited to grow and learn yeah, today. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This verse today. So are we pixely today? Are we normal today? We're yeah, do we look like cartoon we characters? We are scrunched in here again We're today. We're back. I'm back. <laughs> No. I'm back, girl. I'm right in. I'm right up in your yesterday, ears. Yesterday, yesterday we actually had room, like to breathe. It, it was our own we air. Were, we were like, yes, we were breathing our own air. It was very interesting. We haven't done that in a long time. Not in a long time. No, oh, but we will figure it out. I think this is it. Let's just all admit we're surrendering to this way until we get that cable line installed, and it will be a part hey. Well, look at you with your new journal. I needed a. I look needed at you. It's a, cute. It's pretty. I needed it's a flower journal. It's been a while. And it's smaller. I like it. With I like it. It's just how I'm. You kind of needed it because I take over. No, it's so good. I liked your recommendation with journals of just um, having them spiral notebooks, and spiral I've been doing notebooks. that. I've been going in our basement in our school supply closet, and if you know, our kids will ask for certain school supplies, and yes. then they'll use three pieces of paper in the school year for their writing, and I'm like, and that's why you got the grade you got. You didn't even fill this journal. I just threw my kids under the bus, but they don't watch this, that's what they get. But I'm like, so I just, I've been reusing journals, and I'm like, nope, mama needs a flower journal this, I don't know how, I might be in one day. Uh, Who knows? How long does it take you to get through a spiral notebook? It just depends, I've been buying the big ones. Ooh. Girl. So a couple, maybe a month or two. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It, dep it depends. <laughs> if it's a hard season, we're talking a week. <laughs> <laughs> five subject notebook. <laughs> Seriously. I think I might. That is actually what I use. I use a five subject notebook now. That's how much journaling I do. Yeah. And you don't want to mess <laughs> with going from one to the next. Life. The next. Yes. Yes. Mm, I love it. It is good. It's, it's, it's really good. Okay. So it looks like we are coming. Uh, out of mugs. Out of mugs. Are we no, out of mugs? Are we out of mugs online? Mugs. Not here. We're out of mugs online. Online? Yes. I'll oh, get to it, my friends. More. We have more. We got a whole delivery. We have more. You don't see it? It's right there. Yes, we do. In the closet. Did you put it away? I put it away. You. You're welcome. That was nice of you. Well, yeah. That's what I'm here for. I was irritated that all these boxes were out here yesterday, and then I left. I didn't do anything about it. And then you I went said, out I'm and like, you know what? cleaned up the mess. I'm going to wipe that irritation right up, and I'll just move <laughs> these babies out of sight. And then I'm going to take this time to say, I actually have to apologize. And I know you don't want me to do this, but I want to do don't, this. What, what? I'm doing it. No, uh, you can't take it away. What are you apologizing about? I shouldn't have yesterday when Said you Said pussyfoot? Should... I know. <laughs> No, I I'm saying pussyfoot a lot now because it means I honestly bad. didn't know if it was a bad word. We all can tell. Everyone's like, Joy, okay, it's fine. <laughs> I'm like, my mouth has upgraded quite a bit, and I I'm like, um, no, no, no. I'm talking about yesterday when you shared that beautiful letter, and I'm like, listen, everyone, have that come from you. And you're like, and, and you guys had a wonderful session back and forth. I just want, I'm, I'm all humble, I'm chill. It's been 24 hours, and I just want you to know, I was just flowing with the spirit, and all of a sudden, I'm just like, you can do this too. <laughs> Write your own letter to your own daughter. That's how it feels in my head when the enemy is yapping at me, like, girl, you just simmer. So, <laughs> I know you don't want me to apologize, but I'm just saying, I've calmed down. Oh. Well, that's the thing about what we love about you is uh -oh. because you see you see the person that God made us to be. You don't see the brokenness. You don't see what we see. Sometimes we don't. We see our, you know, our lack. That's what it is. And when you no, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, when you see people, including people that we don't literally see, you it's, see the full potential of every single person. I know, so but it's a lot you recognize, sometimes. yeah, but it's just it's a gift that God's giving <laughs> you. Thank you for shining a bright light on me. Okay, so today you're very welcome. Well, you have the shining light in you. 
You know, that's that's the light we want. We don't want the spotlight. We want his light. This is so, why I do this five mornings a week. <laughs> when I'm like, what am I doing, God, and how long you asked me to do this? This is hard. Well, when you sit next to Joy, oh I'm yes. like, oh, I can make a mistake. And she's like, well, you are shining. You are the light of Jesus. <laughs> so I'm going to apologize every day. Just, just to- don't say pussyfoot one more time. Um, <laughs> don't mess around. Uh, we are in James 1.5 today. Mm. And this one... No, five, one right? Five, it's are we, five. Are Monday, we four? Monday. Well, okay, we were we were one four yesterday. Oh, you thought we were we doing thought a part we were two. doing a part two. No, no, we thought we were done with four. You know what? We didn't even come back around and talk about that. We just knew no. we were moving on we to know. five. Yeah, we both, we Sorry, both, we, we didn't both keep knew. you all updated. We too thought. I, we thought I didn't we were, even think about that. It didn't even cross our mind. No, no. I think the Lord's like, nope, we're done. So for those of you who are planners and went ahead and really studied for yet again, (laughs) lovely, you got something extra special out of it the next round as however you're interacting with the word with us. But yeah, we've, the spirit decided to have us move on to one five. We're in one five. We are in one five. Yeah. It's it's a good one. So I'm, I feel like we're going on a treasure hunt today. That's how I'm putting it. We are going on a treasure hunt hunt nice so get ready be prepared uh to receive to learn to grow today Mm. um to be to be in awe of him today right that's my word that's your word today be in awe of him be in awe of him yeah that's what it's about it's being in continuous awe Mm. of him um yeah (laughs) i'm good you, okay. Any other announcements? No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so either. Any There's other voices? Things. You having to do cartoon characters? No, not today. No. Any other profanity? No Yoda. No. 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 All right. Let's dive I, in. I think we're good. Pray over us. Um, yes. Before we do pray, I want to share because I'm a Bible nerd and mm-hmm. um, I'm doing the 30 day challenge that now is a lifetime challenge, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm in the book. Finally made it to um, to the book of John. Started in all, mm-hmm. started doing all the Gospels. And this morning I read something that I've read so many times and I've never seen it before, Ooh. right? And this, I think, really can relate to each one of us. But, you know, Jesus, right before he was to be crucified, um, people would ask him, you know, the religious leaders, those that were really important in society, would ask him, are you the Messiah? And he wouldn't answer them. And I'm always like, why are you not answering them? He would say, if you say I am, sure, type of thing. But I'm not going to answer you. But then the first time he does tell somebody that he's the Messiah, mm-hmm. I read it today. And this is why it's so important, because he chose for the very first person to, to, to share that he is the Christ, the Messiah that they've been waiting hmm. for since, you know, beginning of time. <clears throat> he chose a very broken, immoral, she had not yet been whole. She has not yet out of sin. Hmm. She had been married five times. She was now sleeping with her boyfriend and living with him. Hmm. And Jesus finds her at a well at noon because no one wants to be with her because she's like the scum of the earth, basically. And he chose this particular person to be the first person that he tells that he's the Messiah. Wow. He could have chosen anybody, Mm -hmm. but the very high ones, he's like, no, I'm not going to tell you. Mm. You know, because why did did he do that? Because he looked at her and didn't see what man can see, but he saw into the spirit, into the soul of that which he made her to be. Mm -hmm. And he saw the dignity, he saw the worth, he saw the value in her. And I thought to myself, gosh, you know, and that, that's why I'm sharing about you, that you're able to have that because you have the spirit in you. And we should all have that when we go out here, that we don't see yeah. that which only man can see, that we see Amen. people, we see each other, no matter what color we are, no matter what age we are, no matter what economic, yeah. social class we are, no matter what side of the political status we are, no matter what, that we see the very person that God designed them to be Amen. In, their, in their brokenness, not just yes. after they become healed or after they, be, they think like you, but we're kind, not just to our kind. Mm. And this lady was nothing, I mean, you wouldn't even find yourself talking to a woman, let alone an immoral woman. Mm. And not only does he go up and talk to her by himself, he, 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 reveals, <laughs> he reveals the greatest news ever given to the world itself to her in her brokenness and that very thing is the thing that enabled her get to get out of her sin Mm. because she found the living water Mm -hmm. from a well that she was trying to find from all the different men's arms i just like does jesus just nobody's doing he just i'm just i'm like i felt that much more love example i want to lead i want to follow that example i know right thank you for 
circling us back. I around. had to share that. Does it have anything to do with James 1 5? I don't know. It Maybe has not. everything. <laughs> it has but everything to do with James 1 5. I love Joy. it. Okay, that's so, so let's, good. Are you in your office when you find those moments and you're like, what? Probably. This is so great. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Just want to make sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Joy, for sharing that. All right, well, let's, let's pray. Let's see what he has for us today. So, Father, thank you so much for um, these beautiful people in your holy grounds and in your holy place, and also online, Father. Thank you for every single person that is logged on. You know them. You know them by name. You see their face. You know every detail about them. You've been with them since uh, the moment of their conception. And so, I, Father, I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for the gift of you. I thank you that you have shown us that you are the true light that we are to follow you, Lord God, we are to cling to you, that there is life in abundance in your arms. And so, Father, I, um, I just pray over today's study. I thank you that we um, have the ability, the freedom, the honor um, to pause for our day, to take a Sabbath right now. That's what we're doing, Lord God. You say that your day of Sabbath is declared holy. And this time right now of being just uh, given back, that's what you're doing here right now. We're coming to you, not asking of anything other than just receiving from you. We're not pouring out anything right now. We just want to receive from you. We want to hang by your vine this morning. Mm, yes. We want to um, be given, Lord God, every spiritual resource that you have for each one of us. And um, so, Father, let us pause. Maybe we all came into this barn or into, logged onto this computer or this phone. With it. Just, we just have a lot of burdens. We have a lot of worries. We have some concerns today. Um, whatever, whatever it might be, you know them all. Mm -hmm. And for this moment, Lord God, would you just enter into our heart? Would you just turn on every single light, uh, every room of our heart, and uh, reveal yourself, Lord God. Manifest yourself within our spirit in a way that we experience the supernatural peace um, that's really indescribable, that's uh, it's unfathomable, it's boundless, it's immeasurable. And um, Father, thank you for that peace. Thank you, Lord God, that when we receive you, when we experience you, when we just pause and we rest, and uh, we let you hold on to us, embrace us, uh, that we, uh, we really do receive this life-giving treasure that we're going to talk about today of wisdom and really having an awe, a reverence, a fall to our knees of how kind and how good you are, Lord God. Just as that woman at the well this morning that you had me read, uh, when she encountered your kindness, when she encountered that kind of love that didn't see the filth that the world saw, that didn't see the brokenness that everyone else pointed at, but you saw her beauty, you mm -hmm. saw her worth, you saw her value, you saw her purpose, mm -hmm. you saw her. And that right there, Lord God, drew her heart to a posture of reverence. And then and only then are we willing to give up all these counterfeit comforts that lie to us. It's when we see you face to face. So, Lord God, would every single person right now be able to see you? I can't do it through my words, but you can do it through your words because you're the only one that can penetrate a human heart. So, Father, have <clears throat> your way in our hearts. We are desperate for, we, for you. We love you. We praise you. And, Jesus, we give you and only you for all the days of our life all the glory that you deserve. Mm -hmm. uh, we love you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. Yeah, I love hearing amen echoed. It's and fun. when all of us sing it's amen fun. together. There's a, there's a, there's a definitely yes. a beautiful energy and vibe when it's, a, when it's Friday. So it's, it is. It's it's phenomenal. Fun. Yes. Ah, all right. Let's Let's do how it. do you want to start? What, what's on your heart with the, how you and I dive in together? Uh, if anyone cannonball needs, it. someone got pens and um, journals and Bibles, yeah, we'll cannonball it right in. I say we just go ahead and read it and just see what... Yeah, the Lord has. I can't even tell you how excited. I, I hope I'm not over. You can't over exaggerate God's word, but the way that He revealed it to me yesterday, I I just found so much delight in in this verse, and not just delight. I mean, mm -hmm. delight in the fact that there's transformation waiting for each one of us. <laughs> I know. That's why we get off of these, and I'm like, Joy, I have to settle down. I have. This is just. This is. This is speaking my love language, and uh, so true. I'm right there with you. It's so, true. However, you'd like to start, we'll start. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I so love it. It's funny when they're 20 seconds, they're like, amen. amen. <laughs> the prayer is over. We're already right. into the verse. Oh, yeah. I love it. And what I you said, it. I'm sure. I love it. Okay, well, let's let's read it. Let's dive in. You want me, me to read it? it? You want to read it? Go for it. Okay, well, I'm not sure if I took it from my version, but we are in 1-5. If you uh, have your Bible, it's kind of near the end of your of your Bible. Go ahead and look it up. I have to do it almost every time, so um, there's no shame in that. We're just excited to have you. Um, but we are in, in James 1.5, and this is what James 1.5 says. It says, if you need wisdom, ask 
our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. So I, I, the, I like the, NLT, or the NIV and I want to read that for a moment. It says, if, if any, and I'm going to personalize it because I like to, when I read the Bible, I like to just personalize it. It puts a different uh, shift to it and it, it just makes it more relatable to our everyday life. And that's how it was intended to be. So if, any, if I lack wisdom, I should ask my God who gives to me generously <clears throat> and to all without finding fault and it will be given to me. I love that. Mm -hmm. Without finding fault, and it will be given to me. Um, and I was thinking, you know, so many times in life, um, how I just need wisdom. I don't have that. We got all these life decisions that we have to make, and whether it's school or it's a relationship or it's with our children or our spouse or just life in general, it's like, I just need so much mm -hmm. wisdom. I don't know what to do in this situation. Yeah. And then as I was uh, reading this, because I really do, I mean, it's probably a plea of my heart, probably daily. I need your wisdom on this, Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't know which way to, I don't know which way to go in this decision. I don't, I don't know what to do. And then um, it dawned on me, I remember reading it, and I had to use my handy Google. Mm -hmm. But I love my Google. Someone asked, where do you find your, like, like Bible nerd information? I'm like, the Bible and Google. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But I did, I, I, I kind of remember, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm grateful that and we need to be reading his word because you're going to remember things that you read, not necessarily always here, but you're going to remember it here. And so when you're reading another passage, you're going to go, I kind of remember reading that somewhere else. And you just need to put a couple key words in there and Google will remind you where you find, mm -hmm. found it, at least that's for me. Mm -hmm. But it told me in, in 1 Corinthians 1.30, <clears throat> write that down if you can, 1 Corinthians 1.30, because this is such a beautiful verse. It said that God made Jesus to be wisdom itself. Mm. I love it. Jesus is wisdom itself. He just doesn't give Amen. wisdom. He is wisdom. Isn't that a cool verse? Mm -hmm. And that's an understatement. Understatement of the century. But he is wisdom itself. So as you read this, it takes an entire different spin when we know that Christ himself is wisdom, just doesn't provide the wisdom. Mm. I'm loving it. I'm soaking yeah. it in, girl. Don't even. I, I'm calm. It's weird, I know, but I'm being calm. <laughs> I'm taking them in. There's a. I have like you want some, me to keep going with yes. that word? Okay. Yes. Well, keep going. This verse, though, this verse is like jam packed. I called Tara last night and I said, <clears throat> or I texted you, I can't remember which one it was. And I'm like, uh, I think we need three days on this verse. <laughs> yeah. We so might. We might. We might. But uh, we want to. We'll let you know last we, minute. We want to slow yes, it down. Will. Because, Don't you, you worry. know, what I was thinking out of all the times that we've done teachings here at the barn and. I don't know if we've really ever taught or just mm -hmm. um, sat in the subject of wisdom and how imperative it is. You're right. I and how know. it's really an everyday occurrence mm -hmm. and thought in my own life. I am desperate for more wisdom. I really need wisdom. We all make decisions every day, do we not? And we've all made bad decisions. And we've had to pay the consequences. And I'm still paying some of the consequences from some of my bad decisions. Doesn't mean God didn't make be beauty from the ashes. But there's still residue left over from my bad decisions from not having wisdom in that mm. moment. Wisdom is so imperative and wisdom is so important. That's why I love that we have so many different ages here. We've got young to middle to us old folks, you know. But, um, but regardless of what age you are, um, wisdom is, 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 so, is so key. So I love that James is starting off the book of James with wisdom. Mm. Um, okay, so then this is what... This is another, I want you to write this down. You don't have to look it up, but Proverbs 2.1. Today, what I'm, what, what I'm going to just do for the next few minutes before you and I start going back and forth, because I know you kind of took a different part of this, I'm going to give a couple different key scripture verses. Don't tune out, because these scripture verses are like, like literally digging for treasures. But in uh, Proverbs 2.1, it says, search, search for wisdom as you would for silver. Seek it like a hidden treasure. Search for wisdom as you would for silver. Seek it out as you would for a hidden treasure. Have you guys ever seen that show? And this is so ironic. I just was asking my kids about it last week because they used to watch this show all the time. And I didn't mind the show. It's, de it's a decent show. But it started to drive me crazy a little bit. It's <laughs> called Oak Island. Have you seen, have anyone seen Oak Island? Did it happen in the 80s? No, it didn't. So oh. I'm not even going to ask you because you didn't see it. I don't know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so it's this, it's this TV show that's on right now on cable somewhere where it's two brothers and there's an island. And they, I, they may be from Michigan, I think I heard. But they, they went to this island and they have spent all their money, all their family's money, 
And they have brought people in to find a hidden treasure mm. that is from thousands of years ago, I believe. And they will stop at nothing. And it's mm. season after season after season after season. And these men are like... I mean, they're, you can see it in their faces and their body, and they will not give up to find this treasure. I mean, I'm sure they're, I don't know if they were married, but they probably aren't anymore. <laughs> Where all their money is gone in their bank. I mean, every, they could care less about anything. They don't care if they're eating anymore. They don't care if they're sleeping anymore. They don't care. Mm. And all they want to do is find that treasure. Mm. And that's why I'm saying it's breaking my heart, because I finally said to my kids, how many seasons have they still not, every show is the same. Wow. But I think to myself, what if, what if, <clears throat> what if we valued wisdom like that? Mm, right. Right. What if, what if we all like? I know it's, I know it's a political craziness out there, and I know there's COVID nineteen out there, and I, I know there's all this going on, but I, I don't even see it. I'm oblivious to it because all I can do is find that hidden treasure of wisdom. That's all I'm looking for is you, Jesus. Mm. I am seeking you. I am, I am going into the dark places to find you. And then it, and then it uh, brought my heart to Matthew 13, 44, where Jesus himself says this. The kingdom of heaven, right, which is Jesus, which is wisdom, is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. This is a really key word today, hidden mm -hmm. in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy mm. the field. He sold everything he owned. Mm. He sold his fears. He sold his counterfeit comforts. He sold the cares of the world mm. in order to buy mm. the riches that will enable his soul and his heart and his mind to be free. Wisdom. We have to search for it. God didn't just put it out in the open for everyone to see it. I so wish he would sometimes, though. Because there's so much value. Put it right here. Right? But this is the beautiful thing. Remember that first, first part of that verse says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Right? You should ask God. I have a, I have a feeling that the asking of God, that's the digging. Yes. That's, that's the thing that's, that's hidden. where it's at for me. He's like, I want you to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that you can't find it. It's just that it's hidden a little bit. So why don't you come to me? And why don't you ask me? And let's dig a little bit. And let's seek a little bit. Mm. And let's, let's dive into this a little bit. Let's break open the bread a little bit. Let's, let's get out our tools and really search for me. Jesus is saying, search for me. Search for my wisdom in there. Do I have another minute just to keep going keep before going. I lose this thought? Are we, are we doing okay? I'm absorbing Isn't this great, this word hidden? <clears throat> I love this thing. So, okay, so then, it, then we go on to Proverbs 9.10, 9, 10, where it says, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm. You've probably heard that before, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I've, I've used that sometimes as my life verse in, in different years and different seasons of my life. The fear of the Lord is, is the beginning of wisdom. But let's take it one step further. Isaiah 33.6 says, The fear of the Lord will be your treasure. Okay, so it'll be your treasure. And then a little bit further in Isaiah, it says, I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, secret riches. I will do this so that you may know that I am the Lord your God, the one that calls you by name. So he's going to give us these treasures. He's going to give us this wisdom, but it's going to be hidden in the darkness again. More verses, right? We're now, now we're back into Isaiah. We've seen hidden in, in Psalms. We've seen hidden in the New Testament. We've seen hidden in the Old Testament. Mm. There is something here that God is trying to get across that it's hidden. And uh, it said it's hidden in the darkness. And I'm thinking it's hidden in the darkness. The treasure of wisdom, the treasure of knowing Jesus intimately. It's hidden in the darkness. Could it be that we can only find this in the dark seasons of our life? In the dark circumstances of our life? Maybe, maybe in the dark emotions in our life? Maybe the fourth watch of the nights of our mm. life? I had that last night and the night before. Maybe in, maybe in the, in the, the uh, dark prayer closet of our life. Mm. Maybe in the dark night of the soul. Maybe it's only there. The very thing that we try to bypass. No, I need sleep. So I'll, I'll take a sleep agent to help me sleep. And God's going, I was trying to wake you up. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to give you the very secrets, the hidden things in the darkness. Mm. Maybe it's those dark emotions that we don't want to feel because they're painful. And God goes... It's in those dark emotions, in the hidden mm -hmm. emotions, that I want to reveal my wisdom, myself to you, the intimacy with you. Yes. But then don't forget that very last line of Isaiah 45, 3 that I read to you. I will give you treasures, treasures hidden in the dark. And then it ends with, 
because I'm the one that calls you by name. He calls me by name. This is the thing about, because if, if, if um, uh, reverence for God is the foundation of wisdom, the fear of God, that's all it is, is reverence. It's not a fear like a, like a hosting affair that you and mm-hmm. I talked about. It's a reverence. It's a fall mm-hmm. to my knees. God is so amazing. How do we have that? If we have to have this awe of God, like we're at constant awe, like everything we see, the trees coming in here today, and just, just being in his presence in the darkness of the night. Mm-hmm. We, but how do we have that honest? Because I lacked that for so many years. And if that is a requirement for me to have wisdom, for me to really know my Jesus, because Jesus is wisdom, how do we get there? And I think he just says it here, that he calls you by name. And I think today, I'm really praying as I share this just last bit here, that it resonates. It pierces your heart in a way that my human words can't, but the, his Holy Spirit right now just gets right into our soul and wrecks us in such a beautiful way forever. And the calling by name is, it just reminded me of a verse in 49.15, Isaiah, 49.15. And it says this. Can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for that child that she just born? And if that were possible, I would not forget you. See, I've written your name on the palms of my hand. Real quick. God is making a, a very clear to you right now. He's saying, can a nursing mother forget you? He said, because it's impossible for me to forget you, Julia. It's impossible for, for me to forget you, Kim. It's impossible. I cannot forget you. So it's really interesting here. And this is, I'm making a point here for a moment with reverence. God doesn't say, can a mother forget her newborn baby? He doesn't say that. He says, can a mother forget her nursing newborn baby? Mm-hmm. I'll never forget it. I, my daughter's 19 now. But no one had forewarned me on this one. And I went to 12 Oaks for the first time with my mom. And I left my baby with my husband. And I was so excited to get out. Because I went to the mall and I started shopping. And for a hot minute, I forgot I had a baby at home. And it felt so good. <laughs> I, felt, I felt normal. But I was all the way down at uh, Lord & Taylor. And I'm telling you what. All the way on the other side of 12 Oaks Mall was Sears. And one little baby started to cry. <laughs> did not know there was such a no. thing. Waterworks. I'm like, what is going on? Even though we might, he's trying to make a point here. Even though a mother might forget her newborn child, he's letting us know it is physiologically impossible for us to forget our new, nursing newborn babies. Yes. He is making it so clear. It is impossible for him to forget you. So there's those moments that the enemy's going to say, God doesn't see you. God does, he's, he remembers her, but not you. He's, he's not watching your circumstance. He's not watching this mountain that you're having to climb. When you're saying, where are you, God? Yeah, God's gone. He's making it so adamantly and piercingly clear here in this verse. It's impossible for me to forget you. And then I'm going to end it here because that very last line in that same verse of Isaiah 49, 15, where he says, it's impossible for me to forget you, just as your body is it's impossible physiologically for you to forget you have a baby, he ends it with, I have seen, and then he goes, if I, if I can't prove it yet, now I'm going to really prove it. See? Your name, I've tattooed it on the palm of my hand. Mm-hmm. What else is on the palm of Jesus' hand? A scar? Mm-hmm. Your name is written on the palm yes. of his hand. Mm-hmm. And every single time he looks at your name on the palm of his hand, there's a reminder underneath your name that you are forgiven. Yes. Mm-hmm. Your sins have been washed away every single time. When I read that last night, I just started, I, just, I, I was weepy last night anyway, but I just thought, who am I to think that I'm not forgiven? Who am I to think that, that I, he can forgive everyone else, but that big doozy in my life? Mm-hmm. Nope, not me. That, that the God of the universe, mm-hmm. every time he looks at his hand, he sees my name, and then he sees, yep, she's been forgiven. Mm. That thing done, that thing mm. gone, that thing erased. She's beautiful. She's that woman at the well. I see her name with the forgiven. Yep, mm. she's in bondage right now, but I see who she's going to be because she's written on the palm of my hands. Mm. That right there, and only right there, when you receive that as your identity and as your truth, that, my friends, is when we drop to our knees in yeah. awe. 
and we have a reverence mm. that now becomes part of our, our natural lifestyle, our everyday lifestyle of being in awe of a God that could love me that much that he would tattoo my hand or my, my name on his hand over his scar and it, tell me that it's impossible for him to forget me. As much as I've screwed up, messed up, hiccuped, mm -hmm. impossible. And that will give you that reverence that we're all desiring. And then from there, you will have a natural byproduct mm. of wisdom that comes from the foundation of reverence, that came from the foundation of knowing that your papa loves you adamantly, fiercely, radically, relentlessly, unfathomably, incomprehensibly. Mm. And that's where we get our wisdom. Hmm. Right? Yes. Woo! Hanging on it all. I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm done. Oh. I'm just like, Lord, I went on a scavenger hunt. I couldn't yeah, wait to take you on a scavenger hunt so with good. me. I want to just sit that in that is longer. wisdom, though. It, it is. And we're all trying natural. to, you know, we're all trying to like white knuckle wisdom and how do I get wisdom? And maybe if I can just read more scriptures and get more knowledge and, and uh, God's going, no, mm. it's all about me telling you how much I adore you, how beautiful you are. I, oh, I think I say this very often, but it's amazing to me how when you and I are separately reading the same verse. Yes. And we don't get to always hear from how you guys and what you're getting from the same mm -hmm. verse. But I just, I am in awe over him yet again. And I, I can't believe how, and I hope I can do it justice. My words meeting the feeling that I have inside in the mm -hmm. moment, but also trying to match it with what I felt on my own and this pure reverence. And no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to cry. I am not crying, but I am so I more think you in love with him today. I pray, mm -hmm. I pray, don't let me cry when I talk about you, God. Um, but man, when I'm in the word with him this morning and I read it yesterday because we were talking about it just for a little bit, a little different than we normally do because you're like, I don't know what, you know, do we do three? And we yeah. said, if it's going to be multiple days, this is, That's this right. is why this is unbelievable, right? Because yeah. we've never approached the Bible this way. Right. And to think that one word can, can just captivate my heart and speak right to exactly mm. what I need to hear Are you. Like, this is so amazing. Mm. So I love that you, you, you just mm. spoke that out. And so I, um, you know, so I'm in, in the word by myself and I feel like I have to kind of build up to then match up to what his, his amazingness. Mm. So me reading, if you need wisdom, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him and he will gladly tell you. So that's my tra translation. And he asked me just to stay in this translation. Yep. I didn't have the word generous, and I think there's a reason why he didn't want me to see that word like an adjective to describe. Mm. Um, if you need wisdom, if you want to know, it's almost like it matches up with a treasure hunt, where if he laid out the yes. word generous to me, guess where I would have stayed? Yep. I think I would have hung out in the word generous. And I don't think he wanted me to. I think he wanted me to have that treasure hunt, he and I. Like, for I'm going to, sure. uh, mm -mm, I'm not going to lay it out for you. I know, I know you, Tara. I know sometimes you just really want me to lay it out. I'm not going to even lay out. Oh, my gosh. I'm not even going to lay out my character. I want you to dig. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I didn't come up with the word treasure, but this is what it is. It's like I want you to spend time with me to know my character. Wow. I want you to know I'm not going to give you descriptive words. I want, that, I want that interaction with you. I want the description because you came to me. Because, And I did. I mean, I. and this happens fairly often, but this one was like on my knees. I didn't get my, my pajamas off yet. I just came down to get all my water that I drink in the morning and in between many bathroom breaks. And I just found myself on my knees just before I even opened this word again. And I just wanted, I felt reverence and I can't describe it. I, I can't, it, it made no sense, but all I knew was get down on your knees and just be in a place of reverence. Mm. So I allowed that to happen. And so, of course, then I read the word. Well, of course, I'm reading the word from a place of reverence. Yes. Right? That's where he wanted wow. me. He wanted me to open his word today. It's not that I, it's not, because I, I said, God, do you need to tame me a bit? She and I talked about it, but I'm like, do you need to, like, I love this book so much more than I've ever read it before because it does speak into how, how much when we know you, God, and the power that is ignited in us, 
that there is not one thing that the enemy wants, that the enemy will uh, try to use for harm, that is not one of them, not even the death of a child, not even my own health, not even that will take me from you, God. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I kind of lost my thought there because I, I just got in love with them all over right in front of y'all. Okay, <laughs> I'm losing my mind. So I, I just, I got in the word. Oh, that's maybe he wanted me to read this word in that natural place, what he wanted me yep. to get from him. Yep. So it is all about cultivating a deeper trust in God. That is yeah. what this is about. It's about cultivating a deeper trust in God through trials. Use them, count them as joy. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I, then I found myself, I just wrote, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. Mm -hmm. I trust you, God. He's like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. do you? Because what about this situation? What about this worry? What about that? What about, mm, what about that sitch? Because that isn't trusting me. And he's not, he's not mad. He's not condemning me. He's convicting me. He's just sharing with me. That emotion, daughter, that is taking you over, that, that's, just, that's occupying my space. You're not trusting me. Come to me. Which didn't even have all of that. I couldn't have written that out. Mm -hmm. That's the interaction that goes on in us. Mm -hmm. And then I just listened to it and I got on my hands and knees and I just was in a place of reverence and I'm like, I just want to give up my own understanding. So then I went into, oh, I'm going to actually go back and forth. But what I naturally saw the day before when Joy was drawing my attention to it, uh, and I thought, oh, this scriptures, my sweet spot is so good <laughs> because it says, ask me. Oh, and how many times do I say, God, what do you want me to know? Mm -hmm. And what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. And I have, I, honestly, there's Jamie Winship, James, Jamie. Jamie Winship is a man that I listen to, and he's really good uh, for, for men in general. Mm -hmm. He's just men really gravitate to him. But, but I gravitate to him. I, he is a human being, flawed, imperfect, that I listen in to this quality in him because of who he knows his God is. And he asks God questions all the time. And this man, uh, man, I'm talking man, I'm not, you know, and I, um, he has been an inner city police officer in Chicago. He has been in a third world country. He has served in so many different capacities that I, I hope God never calls me into the type of ministry work he has called him into. Mm. All the way to going into trial, literally, Jamie's processing this, and I'm butchering the stories just to get to the point here, because his storytelling is amazing. His details are captivating. And every time, not a, not a story goes by where he doesn't say, what do you want me to know? And immediately, peace. Hmm. Or, you know, maybe wisdom, but wisdom does breed peace. It gives us more ability to yes. love. It gives us more of ability to have these other fruits of the spirit. Yep. What do you want me to know? He says that when he may very well, the, the, this one trial story, for an example, um, he was going to be beheaded. In this culture, what he did, he will be, I don't even know about beheaded. Where'd that word come from? Are you talking uh, about James? No, oh. Jamie Winship. I don't know why I said beheaded. I don't know what kind of... <laughs> because we spent the last year... In I know! <laughs> Joy, you're going to be beheaded. Be careful. Like, I don't know. It's... <laughs> we said it every day of our life for months and months and months. We did. Paul's going to be beheaded. Son, if you do that, you will be beheaded. <laughs> I might use this. <laughs> and you might have protective services at your door. <laughs> oh, they will agree Second with Timothy me. Timothy told me so. They will be like, I too would behead him. No, I'm just kidding. I'm only kidding. They know. Um, but it's just, a, however he was going to die, he was going to die. But he, he did ask those questions and, and it did flip the script for him in that situation all the way to when he was a police officer and he was, um, you know, a detective maybe at that time and he was trying to, um, deal with a crime and he wanted wisdom with how to help the situation. And this was like maybe child endangerment. It was a very serious, sad situation. And, and Jesus Christ in him, the Holy Spirit in him said, Go check out that person's trunk. He's like, I can't. That's against the law. I can't just open some, tell someone to open their trunk. And they, you know, you mm -hmm. have there's rules, there's policies, there's procedures. 
And somehow he just decided, I'm going to ask him. I got the answer. Go check out his trunk. I'm going to open, I'm going to um, go ahead and see if it works. It worked and boom, um, crime solved, like wow. crime solved. And then he's just, uh, he's, he's doing so well. If he ever hears this, which he won't, but if he ever did, he'll be like, <laughs> you're really butchering my story, but it's good for me right now. Um, but it's amazing how he climbed up in the ranks and his superiors around the nation, really probably even around the world, were like, there's something, this is why he went into the CIA and then he went overseas. Oh my word. But he kept climbing up and they're like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then he had to be honest. He's like, you don't want to know. Yeah. He says, well, what, go ahead, just tell me because it's working. It's obviously working for you. Like he has a record for breaking crimes. For solving wow. crimes. Yeah. And uh, he's like, I asked Jesus. I have a Holy Spirit in me. And so he tells the honest truth. And they're like, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. What we want you, yeah, front row center. But front row center. Keep doing what you're doing, but let's not share that out loud. In, in this, you know, real world, real wow. patterns. And I just, I, so I'm going back to, and, and this, it was in the um, book of Acts, I believe. And this isn't what I was looking for. But this is where God took me. And I said, but God, this isn't in Acts where I wanted scripture. I wanted to remember where in scripture um, people were saying in the middle of chaos, in the middle of darkness, people were saying, but just tell me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to know. So there was another story I was looking for. And I, oh, so bullheaded I am. And God brought me to Acts 22 with Saul on the road to Damascus. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not the one I'm looking for. He goes, <laughs> shush, 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 shush. Could you do the one I'm asking you to do? My wisdom, not yours. Your under my understanding, not yours. So I'm going to go with it. That's what you get when I do this morning of, y'all. Um, so it's Saul on the road to Damascus. And I'm going to get to the point, but it's chapter 22. And uh, he asks um, questions. So it says, um, on the road to Dama on, as I was on the road nearing Damascus about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shone around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Mm. Who are you? Mm. So hold on to that for a minute. He's going to bring me full circle. Who are you? Yep. What about, wait a minute, is that my voice? Or is that your voice, God? Anyone? Anyone? Mm, I think I hear, but that can't be you. Uh, no, that must be my own voice. I can't dis decipher. Like, who are you? But I'm going to come back around to who are you in a moment. So he asked, Saul asked, and Jesus replied, I am Jesus of Nazareth. So nice that Jesus did just reply, though. He's such a child. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying sense. to judge, but I really, wouldn't y'all like to... It is me, Tara, Jesus of Nazareth. Like, I'm like, okay, good. I was just making sure it was that my voice or child. Okay, but I'm going to go past that. And then it says, and, and he goes on, um, I said, what? No, so this is Saul saying, what shall I do, Lord? What shall I do to ask in the middle of this? experience on the road to Damascus. Who are you? And then later, what shall I do? Mm -hmm. Then the Lord says, this is, this is being my, get up. Get up. Mm -hmm. Get off that mat. Come on. <laughs> get up and go to Damask into Damascus, and there you will be told all that you are to do. And, and okay, I don't need, okay. My mind is going everywhere. It's so, amazing. keeps going. Uh, in, in chapter 22, and it um, gives him more direction because he asked. He asked for this wisdom. And um, he then start. okay, let me see. One day after we re returned to Jerusalem, I was praying in the temple. Hmm. Prayers are a beautiful thing. Oh. It's a beautiful way to get wisdom. Thank you for the reminder. Yep. I fell into a trance. I saw a vision of Jesus saying to me, hurry, leave Jerusalem for the people here won't believe you when you give them your testimony about me. And then it's the but Lord that comes up. Not but God. It's but Lord. I argued. 
Mm, do I argue with God so much? So much. I argue with him. I debate with him. I, I have the phrases. I have the, the, the verses in my head. Lean not on my own understanding. <laughs> and then the next minute I'm like, what? But Lord, that doesn't make sense. My understanding to your what you're telling me, it's not matching up. So Saul is saying, but Lord, I argued. They certainly know that I'm in, I am imprisoned. I beat those in every synagogue who believed in you. And when you, when I, um, yeah, and when your witness, Stephen, was killed, I was standing there agreeing. I kept the, the coats they laid aside and they stoned him. But the Lord said to me, leave Jerusalem. So he repeats himself. Yeah, I know. I know what scares you. I know this time is dark, yeah. is troubling. I know your emotions are running high. I know you don't have the mind that I have. I know that you want to say, and thank you, daughter, for still saying, lean not onto my own understanding. I hear you, and I know your behavior sometimes go opposite of the scripture you're reciting back to me, mm -hmm. but I'm going to repeat myself. Yep, it's so good like that. Yeah, and it just goes on to say, leave Jerusalem. And uh, he was scared. He was not understanding. Things didn't add up in his in his world. And so as much as I wanted another story to give examples of people who are asking, who are you? What do you want me to know? What do you want me to do? This is the one God asked me to read and, and, and spend time just with myself. Um, and I'm looking at time, so I'm going to... Um, so when we're in those moments when we doubt, when we let our own logic and our own understanding, mm -hmm. our fear of the next steps, the unknown, we have a lie that we're believing about God. At that very moment in the dark, darkness, the treasure hunt comes from just surrendering and saying, God, what lie must I be believing about you in this worry? God, what lie must I be believing about you if I feel like I need to know every single step before I take the first move? Oh. God, what lie must I be believing about you if I am scared to death in this situation? Yes. If I don't understand how I'm going to let go of these childhood wounds or this hurting marriage, what must I be believing about you if I feel so hopeless that I want to take my life as an adult woman in my 40s and 50s and 60s? What lie must I be believing about you if I feel like this situation is way too big for me to bear? What lie must I be believing about you if I feel like I am not a good enough parent for these children? Mm -hmm. huh. What lie must I be believing about you? Hmm. What lie must I be believing about you? What lie must I be believing about you? Because this is, and then I'm going to go back and hopefully remember to come here, but this is where it's the who are you? So this morning, God, in my journal, going back here, before I do anything else, God, who are you? All my job is, is to know your character, God. My eyes, I want to be that treasure hunt in the darkness. I want you to, I want to know more about you. Huh. Saul lost his sight. His whole world changed in this instant. Didn't even know what's next. And what does he ask? Mm. Who are you? What if, what if in the middle of the quandary, we say, who are you? Who are you, God? And I just listed all these qualities of God. And I didn't finish this, but if I, if I had more time or gave myself, maybe I'll go back to it, but I just need to look at these characteristics and say, ah, that is the one I'm struggling with. Ah, I am forgetting that you have this, you are an eternal being. I am forgetting that you are omnipresent, that you never leave me. Oh, I am forgetting in this moment that you are a creator and you create good and you have a plan only for good because if I'm behaving or thinking this way, the lie is, oh, I'm forgetting this character trait. Mm. I'm forgetting this, Lord, and I surrender this to you 
And I then only ask for truth in this moment and boom, ask for that wisdom and he will give it to you. That's why journaling isn't uh, a, let me just get to the point here. Journaling is freedom. Journaling is answering these questions. Journaling holds our thoughts accountable. Journaling doesn't let the shiny thing as I'm moving on into the world to say, oh, that's right, I'll come back to the truth. I'm gonna tell all the lies, but you know what, I'll, if we just leave it to our own thoughts, sometimes that does work. But I'm telling you, the majority of freedom happens in yes, writing it out. Yes. It's a way of seeing it back at you that I am confessing, God, you aren't that big. God, you aren't that big. You, you're small. Because if I'm, if I'm acting this way, I must be thinking you are so small and I'm so big. I don't want to see that in writing. But man, you put that in writing and you let that come back to you in a gentle, because my God is good. Based on our childhood, sometimes our God is, sometimes we think our God is our dad. Sometimes we think that our God is a vengeful, angry God. Sometimes we think our God is a moody God. Sometimes we think because of the humans around us. And that is a surrendering there. God, you are not human. You are not my childhood. You aren't my dad. You aren't my mom. You are a heavenly, eternal father. So get me right, God. Remind me of who you are. And that is my responsibility to say, tell me who you are. Because he's there yelling in my ear with a megaphone. I am good. <laughs> I created, I only have good plan. And, and, you know, and, and whatever, those, those things that we stuff in our ear that we don't even realize we're stuffing in our ears that James will reveal. Maybe that's where that ask, ask me. Mm. Maybe that's where the seeking and the it finding, is. the digging is when we're hearing the megaphone. Yes. Only when we're able and willing to go and open up that prayer journal mm -hmm. and be raw and vulnerable to hear that megaphone say, mm -hmm. I am God. Because it all comes back down to the reverence, right? It's mm -hmm. what, what you just declared here of declaring who God is. Mm and what he is, and how magnificent he and perfect. Mm, so good. And unfathomable, mm. unfathomable to our finite little minds. Yeah. That draws our hearts to reverence and then puts us right back to the beginning of Proverbs 9, 10, mm -hmm. that the fear of the Lord That's right. is the beginning of mm -hmm. wisdom. It's like a full circle it of that. Is. That's why I'm like, are you kidding? how do you put this puzzle piece together? We don't plan this? Because you don't need to plan it. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm working on that. Wow. You know, he's so I'm, good. I'm rewatching this one. I'm rewatching. I'm, I'm all red. I'm, Look at how I'm oh, all like flushed. I, I don't think I've ever been this flushed. <laughs> oh, I just love him. He's such a good non human. This is like, it's almost like putting, like you come in. <laughs> God. Such a good non human. Oh, could you imagine if he was human? couldn't rely on him. It couldn't be dependable. But he is. But he is. And that's why my prayer is that today that we don't, we didn't just come here for a Bible study and it entertained us and it was fun and it was in a cute place and it, we got to stay in our home mm -hmm. or whatever. But this truly sticks with us for the rest of our life. Yes. That we no longer, yes. you know, we, we're actually Paul on the road to Damascus where we're asking these difficult questions and we get to the root of who God is and how big he is mm -hmm. and that he cannot forget about us. Our name is on his palm. This is who he is. He, he's omnipresent. Mm. He's always there. Mm. His love even loves us in our messiness and our dirtiness and our, mm. you know, our failures and our defects of character and everything else. What a God we have. And we're only tapping into it. Today. I know. And with our <laughs> human, is one verse. But with our human words, we can only do that. And that's why the Holy Spirit right now, I just believe that he is tailor fitting it mm. for every single person in this barn yes. and online right now for it to to permeate, right? And to um, touch a place of your heart that no human being can touch, mm. but God himself. And that's what changes us. Yeah, and so when you said earlier um, that it's this treasure hunt, I immediately wrote, the only way to maintain the treasure hunt, like those two sweet, crazy guys just digging and digging for that earthly gold. <sighs> we need to pray for them. Right? <laughs> You're all set. You have been broken free. <laughs> set free. Go home to your families. <laughs> 
The only, you know why? It's like that treasure for them is so worth their time because of what they think they're going to get from ex getting that treasure. Yep. That is where I was starting. I'm like, oh my gosh, he is so worth our time. Yes. But we don't make time. Yesterday was about, let's collapse the trouble. Let's just consolidate like a pretty old accordion and just pretend that trouble didn't need to happen. And let's get to it. Let's get to that treasure. And it's in that, we talked about that yesterday in that gap. But he has to be worth our time. And he is. But we act like he's not. Yes, we do. Because if we want any of the behaviors that we're all admitting, we're all there, collapse it. That means you're not worth my time getting to know your character. And I want to use words like this to help me understand that relationship between the two of us. Because um, I can act like I'm those guys on digging for treasure. And God's like, wow, that's really worth, that worry, that worry is really worth so your time. True. And God's like, um, aren't we in a marriage? <gasps> wow. Come home to me. I'm the treasure. I'm the treasure. And he, and I mean, all these scriptures, it is bathed that he is the treasure, the hidden treasure from Love the beginning of the Bible to the very end, not just one part. New Testament, Old Testament. I love that joy. He's the hidden treasure. That's why I was shockingly quiet because I'm like absorbing everything uh, you got from him this morning. And vice versa. Wow. I think we're all there. It's just so rich. Mm, so oh, good. I need to like go roll around in a dewy Michigan 30 degree well, we have weather. it for you today. I know. Yeah. Woo! What is that white stuff out there? Don't look. This is, this is, uh, don't look. This is, this is just, this is us bringing sexy back to the Bible. That's what this is. He's making me flushed. I don't mind saying it. Uh, God that. is sexy. <laughs> Meaning yeah. he's attractive. Hashtag. This, Can you imagine that on our Barn 45 t-shirts? My God is sexy. He's very attractive, and I will only dig in for his treasure. This makes her so nervous. She's now like, I'm blushing. <laughs> I'm seriously blushing. Oh, God. This is when, this is the, he's like, Tara, you can chill. It's Friday. <laughs> you can relax. You just crossed the line. There's, oh, there she's back. There she's back. Uh, I love you. Back. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I love you too. Uh, I'm just trying to make, he's attractive. That's all I was trying to say. He's attractive. I'm like fiddling. I'm so okay. nervous. Let's pray to Let's your, pray. Let's pray to your attractive God. Oh, wait, I gotta be the one to pray. Oh, this is gonna Thank be. Thank goodness. This is gonna be hard. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you for making me this way, God. Yes, thank you. Oh, you know, I do have a prayer that I thought of on the way here. Oh, look at you. I know. <laughs> he's like, you got to write this. <gasps> he knew I would end this way, and he's like, you got to write this down, because you're not going to be able to think. I can't find it, though. <laughs> All right. Oh, my heavens. Thank you for humor, God. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Thank you for reverence. <clears throat> Thank you for you. Thank you that you aren't human. <laughs> mm -hmm. Truly. Thank you for being God. Yes. I surrender the capital G God that I, um, out of fear, I just surrender that to you. And I don't say lowercase G God. It is <clears throat> sometimes I totally mm -hmm. dismiss you. Mm -hmm. And... Um, just praying in unity with everyone listening to this. I, um, I trust you, God. I trust you when I'm worried. I trust you when I'm scared and in fear of the unknown. I trust you, God, with our families. And when I say trust, I'm, or we, I'll say we, we trust you, God, with that unknown diagnosis or that diagnosis and the um, unknown conclusion. Mm -hmm. Because if I trust you, I know your character and you only have good planned. Mm -hmm. I trust you, God, in the darkness. I trust you, God, in the confusion. I trust you above all else. Mm -hmm. 
May I, may all of us truly find you so attractive, truly, that we just want to study you and know your character so that every moment that endurance we're talking about without stopping, we go to you. And even if, even if we have to ask, who are you in this situation? Who can you be for us now, God, in this situation? Help me learn more about you. That is the treasure, is the resources that we find that are pure treasures to the very problem we're in. Mm -hmm. Your character is the answer. Yeah. Who you can be for us at that moment is the answer. Mm -hmm. Let us rest in that. Let us trust you today more than ever. You gave us breath in our lungs today for a reason. And may we enter into this day in trust. Love others trusting you. Even if we can't trust them, the situation, the outcome, the doctors, the lawyers, the divorces, the marriages, the children, the grandchildren, the job. Will I have a job? In all of it, we can trust you. We can trust you. Today is the day to focus on today. That's where the spirit is. Jesus, thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for the scars on your hand that was for all of us individually. That's how magnificent you are. It is a mystery, but we're not intimidated by the unknown of the, of the kingdom of, of you. We're excited to find out more. Thank you, Jesus. We have faith in things we still don't understand. Thank you for this reverence. Thank you for what you did for us. And we're able to pray all of this because of you and who you are, your name. Amen. 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 Got good. my dose for the Thank day. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Woo. Have, run into the bathroom. Have a great, yeah, go to the bathroom. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye.